right, here we go. It's another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, realtor here in Ottawa with Sun in Ottawa. And today we have one of my friends and actually colleagues, and we've been kind of uh, a little out of each other's life for the last little bit, and finally we kind of reconnected. Danielle Unsworth, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having me and having this chat. I'm really excited. I couldn't chat. have another episode <laughs> without thinking of putting you on. It was just like, Phenomenal, like the, the the way that your life journey has been for the last, you know, 15 years or so, maybe more. I'm very affected by it. I actually want to know a little bit more about it and let the audience know about who you are, what you do and all of that. Uh, so for everybody that's watching, Danielle's actually been doing real estate investing for the last 20 years almost. And I wanted to kind of just let Danielle just jump in and uh, tell us about the journey, how it started, what got you into real estate and why. Okay, yes, so thank you so much. I uh, actually bought my first property in about 2008. I was uh, in my early 20s. And honestly, I just didn't want to pay rent. I was, you know, going to school for my master's. I needed somewhere to live. And I just scraped up all of like my waitressing tips. I borrowed some money, put some closing costs on my credit card. I just made it work so that I was able to purchase that first property so that I could pay myself rent. So that was really like my mindset at the time. I wasn't really looking at real estate as a strategy or an investment tool. I just mm -hmm. knew I didn't want to pay rent because uh, the way we grew up, we were always paying rent. So that was sort of like what was instilled in me. And then after that, when I was able to make that happen, when my husband and I, you know, got together, instead of having like a really lavish big wedding, we decided to put a lot of that money towards our first home together. Mm -hmm. So we ended up renting the house that I bought and then bought a second home. So that's kind of what started my journey. And then later on, I discovered refinancing. And so we were able to refinance those properties and then continue to buy more. And that's just how it started. So for 10 years, that's all we did. It was very like slow and steady because that's all we knew. And then when COVID happened, my husband, who's an aircraft uh, mechanical engineer, mm -hmm got laid off because obviously nobody was traveling yeah, the yeah. planes were not you know needed so he was laid off and so that's when I really like just made that decision to go all in in real estate and learn new strategies you know I hired a coach I started taking courses and then from 2021 until today my real estate portfolio like grew I started you know having joint venture partnerships I started raising capital and that's really when the business, uh, you know, just took off. But it was really that commitment and then the need to change and the need to pivot because of the pandemic. Um, so for us, it was really a blessing in disguise because we were just going, you know, slow and steady. And then it just like we were all in. Let's grow. Let's make this happen. Yeah. And now I am at the point <clears throat> where I want to share everything that I've learned in the last 15, 20 years so that people don't have to take that slow and steady road if they're ready to just grow their portfolio and then learn from the mistakes that I've made because really it was trial and error for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And looking back now, I could have done so many things differently had I known better or had been you know, more educated in this. So that's where I am now. I'm coaching students. I'm creating communities for women to get together and I just want to give back because I feel so blessed to be able to have been through this journey of, you know, growing my portfolio and uh, being taught so many things along the way. Yeah. And it sounds like from there's so much to unpack, first of all, <laughs> uh, just going to take you back a little bit. It sounds like, you know, 2020, that's when you guys had your the WTF moment, if you know mm, what I mean by that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Like where I got to do something. Mm hmm. So yeah. tell me more about that. How stressing was it? Uh, what got you doing this? Like the thinking behind mm -hmm. it? Yeah, so um, I work for the federal government as well. So my job was fairly stable at that time, even during the pandemic. But my husband, who is in the private sector, isn't as lucky. So that's when we were just like, oh my gosh, like this is not something we can sustain. You know, mm -hmm. we had two kids, we have a dog and a cat. It was just, there was so much going on. And then with him being laid off, we never really planned to be like a one income family, right? So at that time, we just had to figure out how to make it work. So real estate was something we were kind of doing on the side without really realizing it was an investment strategy or a business. Because at that time, we had four properties 
And we didn't think of them as, you know, mini businesses, like mm -hmm. each house is a franchise or a business on its own until, you know, we made that decision to decide and commit and learn and grow it. So really, it was just like, what do we have to do? And real estate was sort of something we were kind of doing, but not realizing it. So then we just kind of shifted like, okay, we're already kind of doing this. Let's see what else and how else we can grow it. So that was sort of the moment because we had no choice. You know, we were not planning on being a one income family mm -hmm. and it just happened like overnight, you know, like yeah. March 13th. Right. So it was just 2020 all of a sudden. Oh, my God. For the next six months, we were just trying to figure out what to do. And so really it's because it, it was something that needed to happen. Yeah. And it's always like that. I find like anytime you have a setback, it's mm -hmm. really just the way I think of it. It's, it's like pulling the arrow. Like you mm -hmm. can't really shoot an arrow fast enough unless you pull it hard. Yes, yes. And sometimes you got to pull it hard enough yes. to get it as accurate as possible, as straight as possible, as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you guys did that. You had that moment, you kind of recalibrated, went back and, and kind of got mm -hmm. yourself back on track. Tell me a little bit more about that strategy that you put together mm -hmm. to get where you are today. Yes, yeah, so I remember I was I started listening to podcasts and, you know, listen, uh, watching YouTube videos on real estate investing and then finding conferences so i remember like i literally googled like how to double my net worth or how to succeed in real estate like just you know everything that people are googling right now probably mm -hmm. right and then anytime there was an opportunity that was either online or in ottawa that i could attend i would just make it work so really i put myself out there i went to you know all the conferences that i could i went to all the online events and just started absorbing like everybody's like knowledge and anything that people were giving out like Grant Cardone had tons of free uh, workshops so I would attend his workshops and then just everything that I could put together and apply I would do it right away and then through one of the podcasts I was listening to there was a real estate investor and she was duplexing homes and I remember thinking oh my goodness like what can I do with the properties that I have now that I could use that strategy? Mm -hmm. So one of the properties we own had an unfinished basement. So that was sort of like the pivoting moment for us. I ended up hiring her as my coach to show me how to do that. So for us, it was that was the first strategy we used after the whole refinancing strategy was creating legal basement suites in the single family properties that we already own. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much took what we had and just made it even better yeah. with new strategies and new education. And so that's kind of what we started doing. And then when we saw the huge increase in value of that home by adding a legal basement suite, and it, exactly, uh -huh you were like, oh my God, how do I create yeah. more of this, right? And then when we were able to use the income from the basement suite to offset you know, the mortgage payments and just have that additional income moving forward it's just really like it's almost infinite returns for that property now mm -hmm. right so that's sort of how things started shifting for us is creating and adding value to the properties we already have and then once we did that we started you know hearing people wanting to partner with us like oh I, I i saw you doing this like how can i be involved like how can i do business with you and so then people started wanting to work with us and then really like that's how I started working with other real estate investors and we started combining our resources and then buying bigger properties. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up scaling to multifamily properties. So one of the things that you mentioned, which I want to kind of unpack a little mm -hmm. bit as far as, you know, you saw somebody that did it, you hired them as a coach. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about the thought that went behind that and why. Yes. So I am a coach now and what I find is whenever you feel stuck, which is where we were at that point right like we knew we had to do something we didn't know what to do and no one in our circle also knew what to do right because we were uh, you know not surrounded by real estate investors at that time mm -hmm. so when i heard the podcast and you know the coach was saying she offered coaching i remember talking to my husband i'm like it's gonna cost us x amount like i don't know if this is like a scam or like are we actually going to make money after the coaching but I just felt ready. There's, there, it, there comes a point where you just feel stuck and something needs to sort of like happen. Yeah. And so for me, that's what it was. So I was like, I'm just going to pay the money. If it's a scam, then, you know, it's a lesson learned. But if this coach can make us grow and make us more money, 
then it's going to be worth it. It was a risk. I took a risk and it paid off because that property went up almost, I think it was 280000 in equity, you wow. know, and then the infinite income that now is going to be producing for us. So the money I paid is like nothing compared the, to the returns that I've received. And also the knowledge that she has, you know, implanted in me, I carry on like every day, even now, like when I coach my own students, a lot of that knowledge comes from her combined with all the other coaches that I've had, right? So I really truly believe in finding the right coach for the right strategy. And then, you know, the next year I was on to like a new goal. So I hired a different coach. So every time I have a new goal, I now have a new coach. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? You know, when you work out, you have a personal trainer. Um, you know, I'm learning how to dance. I have a dance instructor. So really like I go to the experts just to show me how and then I model and I copy yeah. and that's yeah. how I get better. And sometimes it's perspective. Like I remember um, a while back when I was, you know, this is early in my, I want to say like late teens, early 20s. I was, I kept hitting the ball. I used to play soccer. I kept hitting the ball, hitting the ball. And like I'm so frustrated because I'm, it's almost there. Like I can curve it, yeah. but it's almost there. It's not necessarily getting into the box. Okay. And my coach came along and he said, you're only off by about a millimeter. Mm -hmm. So, and it's on my foot. It's only about a millimeter. Tweak it just a millimeter. And I kept trying to do it. And then finally, I'm literally putting it in the top box. Mm. Uh, but that it goes to show that like sometimes just because you haven't done something, it doesn't mean that you're completely lost. Mm -hmm. You just need someone to give you that perspective. Mm -hmm. And a coach can do that, give you a little bit of perspective and also guide you in the right direction. You've done it. Exactly. You've done it so many times before. Yeah. Some of them have done it, you know, more than 10,000 hours to be professional about mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. So, um, with that being said, what was, you know, just put it in perspective as far as cost for that coach. What was it like? Yeah, so. I mean, it's probably different nowadays, but. Yes, yeah. so at that time, it was $5,000 uh, for. For 250 or 280000 Yes, return, exactly, right? right? Like to pay $5,000 to get almost $300,000 and then infinite returns on your That's income. That's a drop in the bucket. Exactly. So I know coaching costs have gone up since then. And depending on the coach as well or what kind of program mm -hmm. you're in, I, I just, you know, tell new investors and my students, just make sure that the coach is doing exactly what you're trying to do and that you also have the same communication style and also the same values Yeah, because that's really important. There's so many coaches out there with different strategies, different values. You have to make sure it's the right fit for you and that you feel confident in their abilities to get you the results that you're looking for because everybody is different. It is. And one thing I'm fine about coaches is like you really can't put yourself in the mindset of listening and respecting what the coach is saying if you don't really have the values aligned, mm -hmm. right? Like if you don't respect them, you wouldn't listen to them. Exactly. Why would you want to waste your money and pay, you know, five, ten grand for a coach mm -hmm. if you're not really going to be honoring what they're saying? Yes. If you don't respect it to start with. Exactly. You're, you're literally just wasting your money. You're in the wrong relationship at that point. Yes. And you also, if you are going to be paying for coaching, you have to be in the state of mind where you are going to be action oriented, right? Like if you're just thinking about it, maybe it's not the best time to get a coach yet. You have to be at the point where you're really ready to take action and you also have to be coachable. You know, you have to be open to feedback, criticism and, you know, things like um, assignments and things like that. Because if you're not going to do the work, you won't see the results. And I see that with my own students. And that's why I like to work with ambitious students mm -hmm. uh, because it gives me so much joy when I see their results, right? Um, as a coach, you're really like, it's like a part of yourself that's being like conveyed through the students. Yeah. So really when you see their results, it gives you so much fulfillment and joy. It's funny because I could literally think of at least 20, 30 people that I could potentially point your way and oh. say, hey, <laughs> this is the person you want to work with. I'm your realtor, but this is the person you want to work with. Don't get me wrong. I can guide them through that, but I find mm -hmm. sometimes actually better that they hear it from someone else mm -hmm. and just let me do what I do best. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I totally agree with you because sometimes people hear things differently and they need the right person to say those things, yeah. right? Because I just had a conversation with a friend yesterday and he said to me, you know, Danielle, like every time I talk to you, I always feel so good because the way you explain things, it makes so much sense to me. When I read about it or when I'm watching a video, I just get really frustrated. But when you say it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I get it. It's Tell because that friend, get in line. I've been, <laughs> I've been feeling like this for 20 some years. <laughs> but like, you know, so it's because 
I explain it in a way that makes sense to me. And then the people that kind of think like I do, that's going to resonate with them, you know? But it's also because you're very warm and approachable, Danielle. That's one thing that you, you cannot discount. It's, you have to be warm and approachable to be able to coach. That's very, very important. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to, again, the, the struggle from the 2020 on. Mm -hmm. Now it's not a struggle anymore. It sounds like you guys got your rhythm going. Mm -hmm. But tell me a little bit more about, okay, your first property right after you got the coach. Okay. So that property, like I, I mentioned earlier, so we already owned it. We turned it into a legal suite. And during that process, I actually, I recorded it on YouTube. And yesterday, someone reached out to me and said, I'm looking to build a legal basement suite. And I found your video on YouTube. And that was from years ago. And so to me, I was like, oh my God, like my documentary of my journey is helping people even today mm -hmm. so that was a big learning curve for me that first property and building the suite and then after that is really like when we decided okay now that we've maximized our current properties what's next and then we just started really like talking to other real estate investors to see what they were doing and then we kept hearing like multifamily, you know like go commercial it makes more sense because you have one roof you know you have 10 units you don't have 10 roofs for 10 different single family one homes roof, one insurance one exactly bill. yes so for me it was really scary because i was really you know in the single family home space so when i first started to go into multifamily, i decided to partner up with someone and be the passive investor so that i could see the process and kind of learn on the side but being part of the deal. So I was a passive real estate investor in a multifamily. It was a seven unit property. And during, during that process is when I kind of learned how to put a deal together, how to do the underwriting properly. Cause I always had done it myself, but this was sort of like a different way of doing it. And I also had a coach for that. So to me, that's kind of what happened. Like whatever the next step, next strategy was, I would find people who were really successful doing it, hire them as a coach, and then just really like everything they said to do, I would do it. Mm -hmm. So if I had to analyze 100 deals a month or a week, I'll do it. And that's what I do for my students too. I'm like, if you want to get so proficient at underwriting deals, you have to practice. Yeah. And then go through, figure out how the cap rate exactly. works, figure out how the expenses work, make sure that, you know what, with financing, like, you have to do the numbers. You have to do the work yeah. to become so good at it. Yeah. It's that 10,000 hour sort of perspective, yes, right? Like exactly. you got to put in the work yes. to become somewhat there. Yes. And then you do it for real. Yes. Because after a while, like now I can look at like a spreadsheet and right away I can see when a number looks a bit off. Yeah, expenses you know? about 60%. That's yeah. a little weird. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. So right away I can get to that point. But what, what is really amazing is you can get to a level where you actually delegate the underwriting to, you know, you can train your virtual assistant to do it, for example, and then you become the second set of eyes that you can, you know, just go over what, you, what key factors you're really looking for. So then it saves up your time. But to get to that point, you have to do the work first, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like sometimes uh, people may want to rush that expertise but you really can't, right? You become an expert by doing the work. And, you know, sometimes when I coach people and it's like a one hour session, but to be able to coach that one hour session, I've really been putting like thousands of hours and so many coaches like in my brain yeah, to be yeah. able to coach someone that efficient. I heard a story actually to, to just kind of follow back on this mm -hmm. a while back. This ship sort of almost sank and there was like a, an issue with the with dollar and things like that they brought an engineer on board to to fix it mm -hmm. and the engineer said okay yeah no problem just analyze it for a good five minutes ten minutes and then he brought a hammer and a nail and he just knocked on this little piece and then the engine kicked back on started mm -hmm. and they're like okay and he gave them a ten thousand dollar bill for that five minutes that he did okay so they're all looking at him going what's going on with that he goes that's my expertise they're like well you just bought a hammer and he did this in five minutes. Mm -hmm. He goes, for the hammer, it's 35 bucks. Mm -hmm. For my many hours of 10,000 hours of so that I've done for mm -hmm. work, that's what you're paying for. Yes. And that's yeah. really it. At yeah. the end of the day, is like you have to be able to do the work. You mm -hmm. cannot just expect the results if you don't put the work in. Mm -hmm. So your first multifamily, 
tell me a little bit more about how you kind of got the deal together. Okay. The story. Yes. So it's, I think because it happened so quickly, I'll give you an example of one where I partnered with my sister because I feel like that one is the more, the simpler uh, one. So we started talking to a realtor through, we found through a networking event and she had, uh, you know, access to a lot of deals, right? So then my sister and I, we were kind of combing through the deals to see which one made sense for us. And we found one that was, this one was a pre-construction and it was three townhouses with um, legal ground suites. So a total of six units and it was in Alberta. So we thought, okay, this is a really good market because it's, you know, investor friendly, landlord friendly. Um, and we have a lot of benefits there. Like there's no, um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think, there's no um, land transfer fees as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're able to evict for non-payment much quicker than in Ontario. So we started looking at deals in Alberta and then we found this one that made sense to us. And then her and I started we were thinking of raising capital to have other investors come in, but we decided we had enough ourselves. So we went in together um, as our joint venture partnership, and we were able to work through the process with the builder, with the realtor, and we were able to get uh, to qualify for the CMHC MLI uh, product. And we were able to pretty much get back money at the end of the closing because we we qualify for the five percent down payment yeah. and a 50-year amortization and so to us that was a huge win because we had put 10 percent down for the deposit and then received money back when we closed which has never happened in any of my deals yeah and for those that don't know what it is check out the uh, website on cmc there's some certain deals that you guys don't know about mm -hmm. specifically when it comes to commercial and stuff like that yes if you're renting below market rent you're yes. able to kind of get things like this that could help you out with deals like that yes the best thing to do is really just hire danielle <laughs> thank you uh, so yeah so this is an amazing product that a lot of real estate investors are really jumping in on right now because it's able to it I think it's a really a huge win for everybody because you can provide affordable housing right at the same time you can also increase your home energy efficiency and so you get to receive all these points and then when you get to the maximum point you're able to benefit from that long amortization period the lower down payment and that increases your cash flow. Mm -hmm. So really, it's a win for the tenants. It's a win for the investors. And it's also a win for the community, right? Because it's encouraging investors to buy new property and rent them out and then save X amount of units for affordable housing. So to me, I think it's a great product. And we're actually looking at another group of townhomes right now to see if we can re-implement that strategy. Yeah. And is that just, again, for the uh, audience that are watching, is that only in Alberta or is that all over? The product is all over Canada. Yeah. This property is in Alberta. These similar ones, um, I don't really see them in Ontario. The ones that are like townhomes with legal suites that are brand new built. I haven't seen those mm -hmm. here, but in Alberta, there's quite a few of them. Sounds yeah. good. And again, we're going to go back. We, I do want to still uncover that journey, right? Mm -hmm. Like for, so you guys got your first one. Where are you at today as far as number of doors? Oh, so you know what? Before, I, I know that I had 137 because we were keeping track of them. But in the last year, we sold a few. We bought some other ones. So I actually haven't updated my profile, but I'm going to say it's probably between 125 or so. But because we're still always looking, that number is always changing. And that's what I've also realized. As you become uh, in the multi family space the units of doors always change so now i just say like over a hundred because it it changes be, yeah. especially in this market where you have to sometimes you know liquidate some assets to buy better producing assets which is what i've been doing yeah i mean at the end of the day it's not like you have to be doing it in such a way that you're not necessarily emotionally tied to exactly it, right like it's not your home you're not living no. in it this is a purely business investment decision. Mm -hmm. So it has to be done on, on that sort of premise. Exactly.